Oh. Oh, the hyena. Yeah. They're really smart hyenas. I was really lucky. I went um, into the, uh, I spent a few days in the Maasai Mara with Sarah Benson Amaran, who's this uh, scientist who, um, I think she's actually at Berkeley at the moment, and she'd been studying uh, communication in hyenas. She'd actually, really interestingly, she'd, she was the inventor of the world's first carnivore IQ test. That's amazing. So she created this test, which was like a, a puzzle box, um, which had some meat inside. And the only way you could get to the meat um, was through brains and not brawn, basically. And she plonked her puzzle box in front of an array of carnivores from binturongs to polar bears to hyenas and all sorts of creatures. And the conclusion that she'd come to was that um, intelligence really seems to have evolved really big brains and intelligent the highly social creatures are the, are the ones that are the most intelligent and and spotted hyenas are hugely social they are strict matriarchy power to the ladies power to the ladies that's why they're so successful because they are People think of hyenas as being scavengers. They do scavenge. Um, the brown hyena is, is, is mostly a scavenger, but the spotted hyena is an incredible predator. And they, they will bring down animals many, many times their size. And they do that through teamwork. And through that is through brains and communication. Women work together. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I guess there was, because um, you talk about historical misconception. Mm. There was this belief that hyenas would prey on buried corpses of people. Is there some truth to this? Yeah, not? well, I think they probably. I spoke to Kay Holcamp, Professor Kay Holcamp, uh, who's really the sort of Jane Goodall of, of, of hyenas. Amazing woman. And um, she told me that she thought that, you know, hyenas would have dug up, would, would dig up corpses and eat them occasionally. But really only if they, they had to. But you're right, in medieval times, in the bestiaries, which were the sort of the first ever animal encyclopedias that were written by religious scribes, um, you know, the hyena was always portrayed in these sort of incredibly graphic images of its back arched and digging up a human and, 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 and eating it. And really, I think, what's interesting is I think, sort of uh, having spoken to uh, anthropologists, is that uh, the thing about we, we're very down on scavengers, humans. You know, we're always like quick to uh, to uh, condemn a scavenger. They do an incredibly important job. If it wasn't for the scavengers, there'd be disease everywhere. But the thing is, is that um, we were once scavengers. You know, early on in hominin evolution, we likely scavenged and were in fierce competition with hyenas. So that rivalry, I think, goes really, really deep and goes a really long way back. And the, you know, we've been, hyenas have been stealing our dinner and laughing at us for hundreds of thousands of years. And so we don't really like them for it, you know. Yeah. What is the thing that hyenas laugh again? Oh, the, the, the laugh is actually a sign of submission. It's that they, they do it um, as a sign of submission. The amazing sound that the hyena makes, and, and, I, and I love it, and it's just the sort of quintessential sound of the savannah is the whoop. It's this whoop, whoop. And amazingly, the hyena's whoop, uh, each hyena with, when, when, will convey individual age and sex. There's like a whole amount of information contained in just that one sound. 